today we will solve the past paper of unit 1 chapter 1 of o levels physics motion forces and energy and uh, topic is physical contagion and measurement techniques so let's start with few mcqs okay just telling you it start that these questions are not of past paper these are different questions based on the same pattern of the past paper the video will contain MCQs and ADP and theory questions all together of the chapter one of unit one. So let's start. The first question reads as which of the following statement regarding measuring instruments is false. Okay. So, uh, so the first statement is mass is measured using an electronic balance. So this statement is correct uh, the next is weight can be measured on a beam scale so this statement is wrong it's certainly wrong and why is it it is wrong because a weight of a body can be measured by a spring balance okay but it cannot be measured by a beam balance because a beam balance compares the masses of objects okay so this is wrong and uh, the c yeah, it is correct and uh, sa unit of ampere is also correct so we have this one wrong so i will highlight the one which we have wrong and the b is wrong Next question, what measuring instrument would you use uh, for measuring lens less than 2 cm in the laboratory? Okay. So, we have options, micrometer screw gauge, vernier calipers, uh, and uh, meter rule and measuring tape. Okay. So, what I would use is micrometer screw gauge. This is the answer. And the reason behind it is that a micrometer is very much accurate in small lens in contrast to the other three options. And uh, the smallest interval of a micrometer is of 0 0.001 centimeters. So even if there's an error, so it would be, you can say, tolerable error you can call it a tolerable error so the most suitable answer is a which is a micrometer screw gauge question three okay so the question three reads as which of the following may account for significant error in reading a micrometer screw gauge checking for zero error before using the micrometer screw gauge Taking several readings to obtain an average, taking measurements when the object is at different temperatures, locking the instrument after the object has been placed between the anvil and the spindle. Okay, which of the following may account for significant error in reading of micrometer screw gauge? Okay, so significant error. They are not asking for a minor error or a tolerable error. They are asking for some big errors so taking that in consideration locking the instrument after the object which has been and will no this is not possible this won't cause a big error it is still tolerable checking for zero error before using the micrometer screw gauge okay just see one thing they are asking for significant error significant means which affects a lot okay minor errors or tolerable errors will be neglect are neglectable okay in this question so checking for zero errors zero errors are really very small they are not that much big problem they may be a problem while measurement but 
they are asking for significant error so it's not a significant error so this is not an option they are asking for taking several readings to obtain an average this won't affect a lot yeah but this is a thing which matters taking measurement when the object is at different temperatures so the reason for it is that at different temperatures the object may expand or contact contract okay this will increase or decrease uh, the size which will definitely affect the measurement a lot so this is the suitable answer as this would affect the measurement the most relatively others would too but they are not significant as the question asks okay Question four: Each division on the vernier scale of vernier caliber is okay. This question is omitted. Vernier calibers are omitted. No need to do that. Just forget it. Any question regarding the vernier calibers, you don't need to do that. Okay, this is also omitted. You you don't need to. Do do this question mm, this one as well okay this is a different question question 7 the ticker tape measures the measure shown below is from a ticker tape timer that measures 50 dots in a second what is the time interval shown in the diagram Okay. Time interval shown in the diagram. Okay, so the ticker tape measure uh, it makes fifty dots per second. Fifty per second. Fifty dot per second. So. So it is making 50 dots. So how many? Uh, so it is making 50 dots in one second, right? So how many dots are these? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And the spaces between them are 13. Okay. 13 spaces, 14 dots. And asking for the time interval, which will be definitely uh, told by the intervals, means the spaces in between. So there are 13 spaces, 13 spaces. And as you can see here, uh, it is being said that 50 dots are being made in one second right so if we divide one second by 50 so this is the time we would get for making one dot okay and multiplying one upon 50 into 13 because that 13 space of 13 time intervals so this makes 13 upon 50. Hence, the answer is A. Next question. OK. So the next question is about a micrometer screw gauge. So it's, uh, we need to take the reading of the micrometer screw gauge. OK. If you could see here, uh, we have the reading. Let me zoom in, uh, zoom in a bit. Okay, this is the max I can go. So this is one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. 
so we have four okay and this is four okay so we can write here four dot now let's take the reading on the spindle 11 12 13 14 so it would be 4.14 the reading is 4.14 okay so our answer would be b which matches our reading and by the way just telling you that why it would be b four here are the mm plus 0 0.14 the uh, the reading here is uh, in the smaller scale so it would be 4.14 okay and we added so it becomes this is equals to this hmm. okay now the theory question starts adp questions okay so here we have a diagram below which shows a pendulum oscillating between point C and A. The time taken for pendulum to uh, make uh, 20 oscillations is 40. What's the period of the pendulum? Okay. It take. Okay. Here we are doing. Okay. Here we are doing part. It takes 40 seconds to make 20 oscillations. So if we divide the time by number of oscillations, so we will get the time for one oscillation, which is two seconds. So the answer to part A is two seconds. The next part is calculate the time it takes to swing from B to C. Okay. B to C. Hmm. So the so we have time of each period. So what is each period? It goes from A to B, B to C, and then from C to B and then B to A. This whole process takes two seconds. So It means that it takes one second to go from A to C and then come back from C to A. So going from B to C would take 0.5 seconds. How? Okay, so these are basically four intervals, four steps, which it takes to come back to A from C. Okay, it goes from A to C and then C to A. It takes four steps which are A to B, B to C, and C to B, and then B to A. So, this takes two seconds, and uh, four are the steps, so it makes 0 0.5. 0 0.5 seconds. 0 0.5 S. Okay. Part C. Suggest two possible sources of error in the results obtained. Okay. Now, there can be two errors. Okay. Why two? Because they have asked for two. Okay. So, the two errors which would be are that first is that you must count the number of oscillations. Okay. You might miscount one oscillation which would definitely affect the results not significantly but still there would be an error and uh, so the first first one part c the first one is miss miscounting number of oscillation or oscillations hmm. 
that's the first error which comes in my mind and the second error which is coming in my mind is that human reaction okay so you would know that that the human there's a reaction time okay there's a thinking time there's a reaction time like you want to press brakes of a car when you are seeing something on the road okay you see that the car after you is stopping so you would press the brake but first you will see then your brain will process it and then it will tell your leg to press the brakes so similarly there's a reaction time that you see okay it has been 20 oscillations you see that your brain processes that you uh, gives order to your hand to stop the stopwatch okay so that time process takes few tenths of a second which are not significant but it still causes the results to uh, change a bit not a lot but still they matter a bit so human reaction time so the human reaction time is one of the cause which will certainly affect the reading okay you might not miscount the oscillations you might be accurate at that that you have counted exactly 20 oscillations but this is an error which you cannot avoid you will you will make this error less or more but this will happen that whatever you do the reaction time will still be there you will see it and it will take negligible amount of time but still that's an error so moving forward we have question 10 give your answers to the following question in standard form okay the diameter of a nucleus of a hydrogen atom is the is in the range of 1.5 10 exponent minus 6 nanometers uh, what is the diameter of nucleus of hydrogen in meters okay so they want us to write it in meters so we will multiply it 1.75 into 10 minus 6 multiplied by meters so meters okay so meters would be the conversion of nanometers to meters is of 10 is to power minus 9 so the answer would be 1.75 into 10 exponent minus 15 meters okay so this is the answer to part a and then we have part b on the surface of earth all objects fall with an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second square what's the gravitational acceleration in centimeters per second square okay to convert meters into centimeters multiplied with multiplied with 10 is to the power square or basically 10 square so i multiplied multiply 9.8 into 10 square which will convert meters per second square to centimeters per second square so this is the answer centimeters per second square 
okay so let me just highlight the answers okay 11 question 11 <coughs> So the question 11 reads as fill in the table from the following list of measuring instruments. Okay. Digital stop clock, atomic clock, analog stop watch. Okay. Logically thinking. You can clearly tell that the atomic clock would be the most accurate. Okay, so the highest accuracy here is this, the last one, number three, two, and one. Number three has the highest accuracy. So this would certainly be atomic clock. Atomic clock. Then we have digital stop clock and analog stopwatch. Certainly, a digital stop clock is much accurate than analog stop watch. So, the second highest accuracy is this 0 0.01 plus minus seconds. So, we will write digital stop clock. And then we have only one remaining, the analog stop clock. Analog stop watch. Okay. So next question, next part. Okay, here is part B. The diagram below shows the reading shows the zero reading of micrometer screw gauge and the reading when uh, measuring the width of an object okay so these are the two readings this is the zero reading and this is the reading of the object the part one says state the zero error of the micrometer screw gauge okay let's take this reading Sorry for that. Okay. So, here we can see the reading. Okay. So, we have error a negative zero error okay so let's take the reading so the reading the zero error here is zero wait a second 0 0.05 mm okay this is the zero error this is the reading we had, which we have taken and now let's move to this part here we have uh, the reading which is 1 2 3 4 4 0.5 and this is 0 0.34 so 4.5 plus 
zero point three four, which makes it four point eight four. And since we have a zero error of zero point zero five mm, so the final reading will be four point eight nine. Why? Because we had a negative zero error. It was already taking measurement of zero point zero five mm. Okay. So this would be a reading. So the first parts of zero error, okay, minus 0 0.05. Why minus 0 0.05? Because, again telling that because the spindle was already moved upwards, okay. It was negative 0 0.05, okay. It goes like this, downwards, 0, uh, 4, 9, 4, 8, Four seven four six four five. So it was point zero point zero five less already than zero. So this was the zero error. Then the next part states state the reading on the micrometer for the object being measured. Okay. So this is the length on the micrometer. So there's the length, and then the third part is. And reduce the correct width for the object. So the correct width would be this after taking out the zero error. So let's write the answers, the final answers, which are 4.84. Okay, don't forget to write the units. Very important thing. Okay. So let's move forward. Okay, this, this is the last part of the question and this is the last question of the topic. So the part C part one says here, explain the function of the ratchet and the lock in the micrometer screw gate. So there's the part one and part two. So here I don't have the space to write the answer, but I will explain you the function of the ratchet and then the lock. So the ratchet ensures that the spindle and the anvil together touches the object with a force that is the same as when the spindle and the anvil touches each other okay when the zero error is measured so the corrected reading gives us an accurate measure of the dimensions of the object so let me explain by the diagram so here we have the ratchet in the micrometer screw gauge and uh, what is what it is doing is that it is ensuring that the spindle this spindle okay let me highlight it this and the other part the anvil is the anvil together they touch the object with a force that is the same as when the as, as when the spindle and the anvil touches each other so what it basically means is that The ratchet is showing that that the force applied sorry that the force applied 
should be the same when there is no object in the micrometer screw gauge and when there is object in the micrometer screw gauge that's the simple function of the ratchet and so it also ensures that that we get the accurate measure of the dimension of object by telling us the zero error okay it basically indirectly is telling us the zero error it basically helps us find the zero error and the next part which is the lock the function of lock so the lock on the micrometer screw gauge ensures that the spindle is not turned accidentally after the measurement is made or else if there wouldn't be a lock the mm. uh, that so what would happen is that after taking the measurement the reading accidentally might change so just to ensure that the reading does not change accidentally there's a lock so uh, we did some pretty basic questions of the first topic physical quantities and the topic itself is not that difficult so hope you understood the concept and uh, thanks for watching uh, please like the video i would really appreciate that subscribe to the channel and share to your friends so they could also benefit thank you